So here we are at the precipice of another big graphics card launch, specifically the RTX 4090. And as such, I wanted to, the weekend before the 4090 comes out, release a bit of a primer on what all of you should expect in terms of performance, overall review sentiment, and launch day volume for the 4090. Now, don't worry, reviewers, I'm not going to spoil everything here. And I do urge everyone watching this video to maybe get up early for those 4090 reviews, because I think they're going to be pretty exciting for a lot of people. I'm not going to tell you all of the numbers, even though some reviewers did share with me some full charts and benchmark results. Now, today, I just want to give everybody a feel for what they should expect next week when it comes to 4090 performance, 4090 volume, and actually... I have some RTX 4070, Titan, and RDNA 3 information to share today as well. Like I said, this is a primer for the upcoming 4090 launch, which means it's a primer for everything else that you might want to consider getting instead of the 4090. But first, let's start with the 4090. So let me put these quotes on screen to give you guys an idea of how in stock this thing will be. And based on what I'm hearing, it really will be in stock, at least in North America, for over a day. My first source, who has been instrumental in many of my supply leaks, tells me that in North America, NVIDIA is shipping four to five times more 4090s for launch compared to what Ampere had shipped for its launch, and that globally, this will be a very big launch by the end of October compared to past high-end launches, not even including Ampere, just a big launch in general when it comes to high high-end graphics cards, how many cards will be available the day or at least the month it comes out because in some regions it may trickle in a week after the launch day. That's pretty normal. But another source tells me that just straight up NVIDIA is telling AIBs that they won't be surprised if the 4090 fails to entirely sell out on day one, which is not what I've heard any AIB indicate about past graphics card launches over the past couple of years. And then another source tells me that there are some weird shipping requirements going on when it comes to these graphics cards. So some of these smaller retailers, you know, besides like a uh, Amazon or Newegg or Micro Center, they might get their shipments a couple days or a week later, but they are coming and they are being told they are going to receive far larger numbers than they did for previous launches. And then a fourth source, right before I started recording, well, this guy showed me an entire storeroom full of 4090s lining the walls. And he said that more trucks will be arriving with 4090s on launch day. Forget Ampere. This is a big launch in general considering the GPU tier this graphics card occupies. And so there you go. I can never perfectly promise you how many cards will be in stock at your exact brick and mortar store in your exact location but i would suggest that if you go to a typical micro center or something on launch day and they are sold out of 4090s that means it's selling very well the only thing i would add to that as another caveat is i really do suspect that the founders edition that will be on bestbuy.com and i believe on nvidia's own website i wonder if that's going to sell out first because when I look at some of the pictures out there, I mean, I'm sorry, guys, I'll speak for myself. I can't fit most of these AIB cards in my case. So I don't know. That's the only other caveat I would put there. I can't promise you some of these models won't sell significantly better than the other ones. But what I can tell you is on day one, whether you go to Newegg, Amazon, Micro Center, or I don't know, a few other retailers, that there really are going to be a boatload of these 4090s available they have been manufacturing these for months and hoarding them and well i guess we'll see how well they sell but to be clear it wouldn't surprise me if the ultra enthusiast graphics card shoppers actually buy up the 4090 in fairly large numbers in its first month based on what i'm hearing from reviewers you see i always want to be pleasantly surprised by a graphics card launch i know i can be critical but i'm always hoping for the best you guys have to understand that my videos that are positive tend to get better viewership than my videos that are negative. But no matter how much I hoped for Alchemist to maybe have its drivers fixed at the last minute, become reliable, and then on average beat the 3060 Ti, that's just not what happened. And I have to call a spade a spade. Just like I was hoping Alchemist would end up having perfect drivers at launch, and it didn't, I am also hoping that Lovelace turns out to have better efficiency than I'm dreading it might not have, and... I actually think I might be pleasantly surprised on this launch. So if I throw up these quotes here, 
This information comes from speaking to a few large reviewers who were okay telling me a few things about the 4090 before it came out, including a couple that were okay showing me early data and full charts, which I'm not going to show you guys today. I want you guys to reward reviewers for doing their work, but I will tell you guys what to expect so that you can, well, mentally prepare yourself if you want to try to buy the 4090 next week or not, because what I'm hearing is that it is actually about 80% better than the 3090 in rasterization and even higher in some games. And that in ray tracing, the 4090 is often over double the ray tracing performance of the 3090. And additionally, and this one is the one that surprised me the most. I'm consistently being told that the power delivery for the 4090 is much more stable and has far less spikes than the 3090 Ti from Ampere. Now, if you push the power slider past stock levels, that is where it gets insane. But apparently it's stock. 450 watt settings, this thing is actually less punishing on power supplies than the 3090 Ti. And so just in general, reviewers speak very positively about Lovelace's performance per watt compared to Ampere and suggest that Lovelace can keep much of its performance, even if you were to cap it below stock levels of power consumption, and that the laptop variants of Lovelace should be big, big upgrades over Ampere in the mobile market next year. And so... Yeah, I'm expecting pretty positive reviews on review day, and I think that it was a very good decision for NVIDIA to not ship the 4090 with a BIOS option above 600 watts by default. So, look, don't get me wrong, the RTX 4090 is a very expensive graphics card, but it seems like reviewers are going to conclude that compared to the 3090, the 4090 will launch with a street price that is comparable to what the 3090 was in 2020, if not cheaper, let's be honest, for what you could actually buy a 3090 for. It'll be much easier to get your hands on, and it actually does bring around double the performance, almost double rasterization and over double ray tracing. Well, having power delivery much more reliable than the 3090 Ti. If you do work and play and you have the money, this kind of seems like an okay deal for those types of people or for the people that just want the best and can now be told they're not paying twice as much money for only like 10 or 20% more performance. They're actually paying a lot more for a lot more. And it's funny, last year, all the way in 2021, I said that if NVIDIA really pushed power consumption, they could almost double performance and rasterization. And earlier this year, I said that the 4090 would have an 80 to 110% rasterization increase, depending on what power consumption they gave the card, which I said it would be 450 to 600 watts, and that the ray tracing over raster increase would be 25 to 50%, meaning over double if it's a little under double for raster. And that's exactly what's happened here, guys. But for now, they're not shipping that insane 600 watt graphics card because it apparently is just a disaster. Now look, Video Cards is already pointing this out. You'll be able to overclock the 4090 past 600 watts and probably add another 10 to 20% in performance to it if you want to. But NVIDIA does not want that to be in a BIOS by default. And well, <laughs> I'm going to tell you why in the next part of this video. Like I said, guys, I have information on the Titan. I have information on the 4070, including pictures. And I have some whispers about RDNA 3. But first, an ad from a sponsor. This piece of content is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace allows you to pick from a series of templates that are each structured to cultivate a different type of website that you yourself can then tailor to your needs. Whether you're building an interactive resume to get hired this fall or building a website for an existing business, Squarespace offers powerful features like members areas, allowing you to segment content that's sold to followers, online stores with options for both physical and digital products, and SEO tools to track your business and make informed decisions on how you can best grow it. Head to squarespace.com slash Moore's Law is Dead to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code Moore's Law is Dead. Clicking on this link and using this code greatly helps the channel and it helps you launch your next venture. Support Moore's Law is Dead and your online presence with Squarespace today. All right, so I finished telling you about what you should expect of the RTX 4090. What about something stronger than the 4090? What about a 4090 Ti? 
or a Titan, which, to be honest, I was expecting whatever comes out, and it still might come out, they still might call it this, would most likely be called a 4090 Ti, because I don't expect NVIDIA to dust off that Titan naming scheme until they feel completely safe from AMD touching them. Now, maybe I'm wrong, maybe that's something they just use sometimes when they feel like it, but I have to admit, the people I've talked to, most of the time they call this top tier card a Titan. Now, I don't have a picture of some, like, plate that says Titan, but I have seen pictures of a deformed graphics card, and, well, yeah, I don't think the Titan, at least, is coming out anytime soon until NVIDIA has more time to get access to more efficient memory and to tune its power. Let me throw this quote on screen here, and this comes from somebody that over about six months has proven to me they are more than legit based on the pictures and information they fed me before things have been made official. Uh, anyways, this person tells me that as of now, Titan Ada is canceled because it's just too much for the market. Look, it didn't use 800 or 1,000 watts like some of the more absurd rumors claimed on Twitter, but there really was a 600 to 700 watt card in the labs that has been canceled due to tripping breakers in the labs, melting power supplies, and apparently sometimes melting itself. There are deformed test cards out there, guys, that are four slots thick, have two times 16 pin connectors, and are so big that they usually mounted the motherboard to the side of the card instead of the card in a motherboard. And so I can't promise you there won't be a Titan. I, I do think whether it's called a 4090 Ti or it's called a Titan, NVIDIA will have some souped up AD102 card probably early to mid next year once they see how strong RDNA 3 is. I think what they're going to do is wait for faster memory, maybe not even GDDR6X. Maybe they'll wait for like 27 gigabit per second GDDR6 from Samsung or even GDDR7. Like I've said, I'm told that these cards can use They'll take that, it'll use less energy than a GDR6X memory system, and they'll, with that saved memory and increased bandwidth, they'll also up the amount of CUDA cores that are enabled and launch something 10 to 20% stronger than what they have now. But what they had now, what they were calling a Titan in the labs, apparently it's just not worth launching until they can work on tuning the power a little bit more and see exactly how strong it has to be to beat RDNA 3. Because if they push it too much, it can melt power supplies, and it can apparently melt itself. All right, then. So I've covered the 4090. I've covered the Titan. What about the RTX 4070? Well, as far as I can tell, the RTX 4070, this thing doesn't seem like it's coming out any sooner than December. And I honestly think it's probably launching quarter one or quarter two next year. But I say I think, I'm not 100% sure, because I've seen it. They have it. They have the graphics card. If they really wanted to launch it in a few months, I think they could. And I can't show full pictures of it yet because it's just not safe. But I am working on a way to show you full views of what a 4070 looks like this year. I'm just not going to do it today. But what I will do is I will show you a little snippet of what the 4070 looks like right here. And this is just to convey, generally speaking, what the graphics card looks like. It is still just going to be two slots like the 3070, but I would say it's cooler is actually closer to what a 3080 looks like. And I can't show you any more of a view than this insanely manipulated picture, but I think this gets the point across. You can see in this picture, it's two slots and it has a lovelace eyes version of a 3080 fan. It's not as big as the 4090s fan, but it's a similar type of fan. And then I also want to show you this diagram I put together here that conveys exactly what the whole thing looks like. So remember that fan I showed you that's been heavy, man heavily manipulated to not hurt my source. And then look at this diagram here. Basically, if you look at the green outlines, that's the differences that I see between the 4070 and the 3080. The fan is made a little bigger than the 3080's fans, and it's moved in a little closer. And then the side pieces are just slightly different shapes, and the end pieces are as well. So it's basically a 3080 made a little more shorter, a little more compact, and then it's lovely sized in terms of style. And so, yeah, if you want a 4070, if you're waiting for a 4070, what you'll be waiting for is a card that looks like a slightly smaller 3080, but it's going to be a little bigger than a 3070, and it's probably going to use, you know, 220 to 275 watts, which I don't have specs yet. And it's actually quite funny. I reached out to a couple reviewers that have really good relationships with NVIDIA, and they told me that they've been fed different specs depending on the NVIDIA rep they talked to for the 4070. 
Almost like NVIDIA is intentionally telling different people slightly different specs to confuse people and try to suss out which reviewers leak. So I'm not going to say what any of those specs are, but they're all fairly similar. And honestly, if I just pull up this tweet here from Copite, this is probably close enough. Whether they give it 10 gigabytes of RAM like Copite is suggesting, and they might, or they give it 12 gigabytes of RAM, I think it's safe to say that the 4070 is going to be based on 8104. It's going to be... 85 to 95 percent the performance of the 4080 12 gigabyte and it's gonna have 10 or 12 gigabytes of ram and no matter how they price it it's gonna look silly compared to last gen but it's also gonna make the 4080 12 gigabyte silly and i just don't know if nvidia cares they're gonna wait they're gonna see what the rdn a3 lineup starts to look like try to sell off as much more of their high-end ampere cards as they can right now and their oversupplied market and then once they're ready they will decide do they need to be aggressive if they need to be aggressive, I think they will disable the graphics card by like 5 to 10% in CUDA cores and give it the full 12 gigabytes of RAM and then price it between $550 and $650, basically launching something that is the performance of about a 3080 12 gigabyte in rasterization, but then better ray tracing and lower power consumption, better features, and slightly cheaper. But if they don't think they need to worry about anything, yeah, I don't know. They might launch this thing for like 650 to 750 only give it 10 gigabytes of RAM, and basically just launch a 4 nanometer version of the 3080 that uses less energy and has better ray tracing, which would be disappointing. But let's be honest. So far, every 80103 and 80104 graphics card we've seen is overpriced and oddly segmented, and I don't expect anything that different with the 4070. But anyways, yeah, I mentioned RDNA 3. Without a doubt, the way they decide to segment the 4070 will depend on how impressive RDNA 3 is. And yeah, I'm going to give you a couple of whispers about RDNA 3 right now. So the first thing I want to tell you guys is I have a couple of sources independently confirming to me that RDNA 3 has DisplayPort 2.0, which honestly doesn't really matter right now. Even a lot of the high refresh rate 4K monitors still only have DisplayPort 1.4. But I think it's worth remembering that these graphics cards, Lovelace, RDNA 3, these are going to be sold for over a year. And maybe not this holiday season, but next holiday season, I expect a lot of exciting DisplayPort 2.0 monitors. And it seems like, you know, Lovelace only has 1.4 and AMD is going to be the one who's able to advertise that they can support some absurd frame rates and resolutions. I mean, if you look at this chart here on screen, <laughs> DisplayPort 2.0 is going to allow crazy 1440p frame rates, uh, esports level 4k frame rates and even some pretty impressive 8k maybe 90 frame rates as well only amd is going to be able to do that with a single display port connector lovelace won't be able to it's not really a problem for nvidia right now but it could be a year from now and it's it's something you guys should think about when you're deciding if you want to buy lovelace or rdna3 besides that what else can i say about rdna3 well the ray tracing is a wild card I will say since Lovelace has been revealed, a couple of AMD sources told me that we should no longer expect RDNA 3 to tie or win ray tracing with Lovelace, which I don't think any of us ever expected it to win, but we were all hoping it would be close. It sounds like they still expect NVIDIA to win ray tracing, but outside of that, I have no specifics, so I wouldn't double down on anything that specifically about RDNA 3 ray tracing. I would just say that its ray tracing performance is probably going to be at least a little worse than Lovelace, but its rasterization should be close. You remember that pink quote I showed on screen earlier in this video, that quote from over a year ago from one of my sources that said that if they really pushed power consumption, NVIDIA could maybe get to almost double the rasterization increase over amp here. Well, that source said other things in previous videos as well. That source told me that Lovelace, if they didn't push power consumption, would be a 60 to 80% increase in rasterization over amp here, which guys, that source has turned out to be right. And guys, that source, I'll let you know, was at AMD. This was an AMD source going through internal AMD documents and presentations where they were doing projections for what they thought they had to beat next year. And what they thought they had to beat was about 60 to 80% rasteri rasterization increase. That source tells me that in their presentations, they were projecting that RDNA 3 could at least do that. And so... Yeah, maybe RDNA 3 won't win ray tracing, although I'm not 100% sure about even that yet. But we know the specs from me, and especially from Angstronomics. And that source that told me Ampere, um, Lovelace information that has turned out to be very correct, 
said that RDNA 3 will at least match that in rasterization. And so if you don't need a Lovelace card right now for work, which if you do, hey, it looks like it's going to be above expectations. But if you don't need it yet, RDNA 3 sounds like it might be something worth waiting for. And uh, yeah, that's going to just about do it. I mean, let's just summarize what I've told you guys today. Number one, the RTX 4090 actually sounds like it is going to be in very high supply and it is going to impress reviewers. So if you need something for work and play, you like ray tracing or you need to get a high end card right now and you have the money, the 4090 sounds much better than what Ampere brought to the market, even if this market is a bit depressed and not looking to spend a lot of money. So I guess that's still an expensive card, but it's mostly good news for what I think most people were expecting. You'll be able to buy it, and it will not disappoint based on what NVIDIA has told us. It won't be two to four times the performance, but that was NVIDIA's own ridiculous DLSS stuff. Now the Titan, though, I wouldn't wait for any Titan. You'll be waiting a long time. That thing is canceled for now, and the 4070... Again, I don't think that's coming out till next year, and if it does, I don't think it's going to be much better than a more efficient 3080 with better ray tracing. So waiting, I don't think you should wait. Might it be good by the time it comes out? Yes, but I don't think anyone's going to get like an RDNA 3 card this fall and then regret not waiting for the 4070, which on that note, all evidence points to RDNA 3 being competitive with Lovelace, and it has DisplayPort 2.0, which gives it a bit of future proofing Lovelace does not have. And uh, yeah, that's going to just about do it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I've actually got other leaks coming very soon as well that involve Intel, and unlike some of the recent stuff I've been forced to tell you guys, it's mostly positive information. So I'm excited again. My videos do better and I'm happier when I have good information to tell you. I've got some good information coming regarding Intel soon. Make sure you subscribe to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel and ring the bell button. And then also make sure you tell your friends about us. And if you have the extra money, please support us on Patreon. Patrons get access to Broken Silicon early and ad-free. They can ask me and guest questions. They get access to exclusive podcasts like Die Shrink. One will be coming out next to the Lovelace launch only for patrons. And uh, yeah, that's just going to about do it. Thank you for watching.